thank, th thank you very much, everybody, and thanks for such a very warm welcome to, uh, to Wickford. Um, in, in researching and preparing for this event, I have discovered that I have a personal connection with Wickford, and that's that um, my wife used to go out with someone who lived there. <laughs> so, so, so just to make sure we get off on the right foot, it's, it's not any of you, is it? <laughs> Good, okay. Now, as, um, seriously, as uh, uh, Mark has already um, emphasised, uh, the National Lottery is the People's Lottery. And it's hugely important, I think, that everyone who plays the lottery, the length and breadth of the United Kingdom, feels that they have a reasonable chance of accessing the good cause cash that's raised by uh, the lottery. Uh, and there are needs that exist in every constituency, in every community throughout the United Kingdom. Uh, they're different, but they're undoubtedly needs. Now, quite often, and I imagine for some of the people who perhaps gave up applying for, for lottery funding or have never got round to doing it, you thought um, it's not worth us applying because we're not an incredibly uh, deprived, desperate urban area with the sort of poverty that you see on the news um, every night. And yet, you do have very distinct needs. And we as a funder, I want to try and assure you, recognise the range of needs that exist across the United Kingdom. So, as well as economic uh, deprivation, there are all sorts of other kinds of need. I mean, even economic deprivation doesn't always cluster together in huge clumps, does it? You can have pockets of deprivation and need within other apparently um, affluent areas. You can also find need is dispersed um, across broad areas, particularly more rural communities, and that can be hard to pick up in unsophisticated funding um, <coughs> formulae. So there are needs too, such as uh, ageing, isolation, the needs for older people to live uh, longer and a decent quality of life uh, in their own homes, needs which disabled people have, needs which parents and families of children with learning difficulties have, or those young people uh, have for themselves. These are not related to the take-home pay of individuals or communities that, that live in the street. These are needs which exist everywhere, and it's really important the Big Lottery Fund is responsive uh, to those, as indeed the lottery more broadly. And there are parts of the country where this is happening at the moment rather more than is the case in Rayleigh and Wickford. So, for example, um, there are projects supporting... Um, younger people to work with older people to help them respect and understand and lead higher quality lives. Uh, £275,000 awarded to an organisation in, uh, in South Staffordshire. We've supported projects that um, help children uh, engage and enjoy after school activities to help them develop their self-confidence in uh, Enfield. I could go on. I mean, there are specific examples. So it is not inevitable that um, uh, because of the uh, statistics in terms of take-home pay that exist in any particular area that you can or you can't access lottery money. We as a distributor do have a mission to support communities most in need. Um, so it's probably likely that proportionately more money will go to areas that are poorer in aggregate terms, but it's much more complicated um, than that. And I believe that there is potential for um, more of the sorts of awards which um, I've just sketched out there to be made in and around this area than is the case at the moment, and that's why I'm here today and having this uh, conversation with you. Having said that, there are lies, damn lies, and, and statistics, and um, there are some reasons why, if you look at constituency tables of lottery funding, um, Ray and Wickford doesn't score as well uh, as others. And that's partly because uh, the way in which um, those statistics are developed relate the money to the headquarters of the organisation um, that accesses the money, rather than where the benefit is felt. So there may well be projects and there may well be people in this room who aren't actually based with an address in the constituency, but can provide real added value to the people of Rayleigh and Wickford. And those are as important to us 
um, I'm sure you would agree, as organisations that happen to have an address um, within the constituency. So an example of that would be the £20 million pounds that the big lottery fund awarded to the National Let's Get Cooking project to help children and the wider community uh, engage and understand the value of, uh, of, of good, uh, well-prepared food. And the headquarters of that project is based in Sheffield, but there's more than 5,000 clubs at work in relation to that project, including schools uh, in Whitford and schools in Rayleigh. Sometimes there are projects which extend beyond constituency boundaries. So we gave a large grant to the Basildon-based Pavis Foundation for Visually Impaired People, whose statistics would suggest there is benefit coming into this, uh, to this constituency. We also funded <coughs> Dial Basildon to support the needs of people with disabilities and their carers in the district. All that said, I still believe, and I know that Mark still believes, that there are more opportunities for more of you based in this constituency to access more of our money. So how, uh, together, are we going to enable the situation to be improved on where it is at the moment? Well, the first thing is, you have to apply. Uh, that might be about confidence. Um, that might be about lack of awareness. Um, I don't know. But the truth is that the people of this constituency... When you do apply, you do proportionately better than the average across the country. So don't underestimate your ability, individually and collectively, to access, your mon access our money. When you have a go, you're rather good at it. Second thing is, though, you do need to apply uh, well. And so you need to understand what it is we are looking for from a high-quality application. And we need to understand what you uh, value and what your needs are and kind of share a sense of those as the funder and the funded. And the most fundamental thing, and I'm sure you're going to hear more about this from um, all sorts of people this morning, is to be really, really clear about the impact, the difference that your project is going to make so that you can capture that and evidence that in fairly simple terms for small amounts of money, but increasingly more sophisticated terms as you look for rather more money. And that's because there are loads more great causes, great ideas, passionate people who want to access lottery money than there is cash available. And we are a public funder, and ultimately, actually, I'm personally accountable for par to Parliament for every single one of the awards um, that we make. So you can see why there's an aspect of bureaucracy in the decision-making process we have and the choices that we have to make. Um, but at the smaller level in particular, it really is as simple as understanding the difference you want to make, articulating that, and explaining how you are uh, going to know. And the other really simple thing is, as you would say to any school child, answer the question on the exam paper. And the main reason why we reject applications as a funder, and I think you'd hear that this from just about every other funder, is because people haven't answered the question. They haven't attached the right piece of form or the, or the, or the information. <laughs> so very often it is as simple as that. So don't underestimate just working clearly and systematically through um, what is being asked. So, um, there is an issue here. Our desire to be here and engage with you, I hope you will see as evidence of a wish to help you help yourselves to the extent um, possible. It could be you. You've got to be in it to win it. Uh, I think there is potential um, for more uh, projects to be identified and come forward than is the case at the moment, whether they're based in the constituency or whether they're serving the constituency. And I hope that that's the challenge um, we can set ourselves today. And uh, together, we'll uh, break through this sort of chicken and egg um, situation and feel like um, the people of Rayleigh and Whitford, the lottery players of Rayleigh and Whitford, are having their fair crack at accessing this fantastic um, stream of money which the National Lottery delivers for great causes and passionate people making a huge impact on their communities, the length and the breadth of the UK. And that's people such as yourselves. So thank you very much and I hope you find today really useful.